So today we're looking at peace of mind and freedom from fear, the true goal of every desire. And I talked about this a couple of months ago, and the reason I want to bring it up again is because uh, several people have brought it up uh, different times that we've had conversations and uh, they seem to find it helpful. And I'm just going to take a slightly different approach to it today, but it's the same idea. We're <clears throat> moving into our 4th of July celebration of the birth of our country and we naturally think of freedom because that's what we are, one of the uh, principles we're based on as a country. So as we prepare to celebrate the birth of our nation, our thoughts turn to the meaning of peace and freedom. I have said, and it's worth repeating, that the true goal behind most everything we seek is peace of mind and freedom from fear. The problem with our attempts to achieve these important states from the outside in is that our achievements rarely satisfy for long. So it's important that we learn to find peace of mind and freedom from fear in ways that are not dependent on what we do or do not have. And I think the question that we all should ask ourselves is that, is this really possible? It's a, a wonderful idea. It's pretty easy to grasp the idea, but what about those times that we're in a situation where we're thinking about it? We don't know exactly what to do. We don't know exactly how to handle it. Uh, I don't know that those times ever leave. You know, it's a... Uh, uh, the, the, the way that we used to think, or that I used to think, I should say, the way I was trained to think is that we come to this earth as a school. We come here to learn. And we know there's something that we need to learn by how we are reacting to life. And if we're in a situation where we're reacting in fear and we lose our peace of mind, we would interpret that as my soul is just not evolved yet. I, there's more to learn, and this situation has something for me to learn. And that's a valid way to look at it. But it uh, doesn't sit quite right in the uh, model of the near-death experiencer because what these folks say almost to the person is that when they step out of the body there's a level of soul that is so beautiful they don't want to leave it it's just phenomenal what they say they experience and they don't want to come back and that's almost down to the person I mean it's uh, the majority of people who have this experience they're often angry. One of, the, one of the most common emotions that they have after they come back is anger. And they're either mad at the doctor for resuscitating them or they're mad at the being of light that says it's not your time. They <clears throat> are able to see the body and they think there is no way that that which I am is going to fit in that body. But somehow it does, and they will often say they feel very squeezed in, very tight. And so they're very resentful about that. We may think it would be a wonderful thing to have an experience like that. But if it's not our time, and I don't know what that means exactly, but if it's not our time and we're forced to come back, it would be a little bit depressing because here we are again having to deal with the same old life, you know, once we experience this tremendous amount of freedom that we don't even have to work to try to experience, it's just there. Because we're not confined to the body, we're not uh, hindered by having to feed it and transport it and clothe it and house it and all the stuff that we insure it, all the stuff that we have to do normally. So we may ask, is this possible even to make this shift while we're in this body? And I think the answer is yes, but it requires a way of thinking that is quite different from what many of us practice daily. We want to solve the problem so we can have peace of mind and freedom from fear. And that makes absolute sense. There's, uh, when there's something looming in your life, you know, you want that resolved. Because, uh, and what does that mean to have it looming? It means that it is appearing to be something larger than you. 
something threatening, something that you don't want there, something that is uh, disconcerting or uncomfortable. And we want to get it out. We want to get it away from us so we can rest, so we can relax. What happens when we resolve it? We've all been in that situation thousands of times that where we had a situation that we wanted to have fixed, have removed, and we thought if we just had that done, then we'd be happy, uh, you know, we get past that. Yes, we do want to get past that. But it makes you wonder that that seems to be the nature of living in this body, that we're always going to have these kinds of things. So is it possible to actually look at it in a way where we can experience the peace and freedom prior to getting rid of the thing? And again, the answer is yes, but it requires a way of thinking that's quite different from what many of us practice daily, just our knee-jerk reaction. We want to solve the problem so we can have peace of mind and freedom from fear. Can we turn this around by learning to experience peace and freedom first, and then from this more stable state, work toward a resolution to our problem? Let's find out. So the first thing we do is think of something that we're going through. Um, if you aren't going through anything, I can share a few of the things I go through and uh, you know pass them around, pass, pass on the love. But think of that issue in your life that you want to resolve. And let's pray about it. Does this mean we're going to ask God to fix it for us? No. And this is a departure from where most of us were trained. It means that we're going to release all fear, all doubt, all stress that we have accumulated around the issue. So when we pray for a resolution to something, aren't we usually thinking of the old guy up in the sky coming to our rescue? Or something like that. I will affirm something and something's going to change and something's going to lift me up out of this problem. Uh, it's going to resolve. Is that the way it works? That's the way we are trained that it works, that we call upon a savior, we call upon help from on high uh, to go into action and help us resolve this issue. But then we have to ask ourselves, if we're coming from a spiritual point of view, does God ever, ever stop acting? Does the universe ever stop spinning? Does anything really change in the regard, in the sense that I've got this problem and I need something to come and help me fix that? And the answer really is no. It doesn't change. It's uh, the way we see it that has to change. And that's the most difficult thing of this whole uh, process, in my opinion. I don't know how many times, uh, you know, we're, we're going through this transaction here with the church. There's always something popping up, you know, that, and this is typical, I think, of all of our lives. There's always something popping up that we don't know, don't know quite how to handle. And my typical knee-jerk reaction is, well, I need to find somebody that does. I need to find some help. I don't necessarily think of God as... Uh, showing me how to do a real estate transaction, <laughs> although I'm sure God is quite good at it. But it's just a knee-jerk reaction to think, I don't know how to do this, so I need to ask somebody else. Well, we can also, instead of have that reaction, or we can have it, but then a few moments later we can say, no, that which I need is here now. All the wisdom I need is here at this very moment. I may not be conscious of that. And I may not actually have the wisdom I need. I may not have the answers that I need. But to not have a reaction of, I don't have what I need, to, to stop that type of reaction and say, okay, I don't know what that is yet, but it will unfold. What I always find is 
it could be a phone call, it could be a conversation, it could be finding something online that answers the problem, it's resolved. And I think one of our biggest problems is as soon as the thing pops up, we want it fixed yesterday. You know, we want it, we don't want to have to deal with it at all. But if we will just say, okay, here's something that I don't understand right now, but that I will, it will unfold in proper time and proper way. And I let that go. I let it, let myself flow with that or move with that rather than react to it. Because what is a reaction? What is it, a negative reaction? It's a degradation of the quality of life that I'm experiencing right now. And so that's the problem. It's how I respond, how I react. And that is uh, what we're trained to do. It's like I don't have what it takes to resolve this, so Naturally, I'm going to be afraid. I'm going to lose my peace of mind or whatever. So this is quite a responsibility when we're talking about spiritual learning. It's, does something have the power to rob me of my peace of mind and my inner freedom? So we have this conversation with ourselves. Does this thing have that power? And if I say no, then I say, okay, what do, I, what do I do? How do I handle this? And it's to begin immediately to know that what I need is unfolding. Exactly the information I need is coming forth as I need it. I don't need it exactly right now. I'm in a situation where I don't have to have the answer at this very moment, but it will come. And that's, I think that's the biggest problem I have as I observe myself. Something pops up, I want the answer right now. I want to know what to do right now. Because you feel vulnerable when you don't know what the answer is. And so you respond. And that's one of the things that we have to um, get over, I think. That's where the, the soul evolutionist uh, thinking comes in is, the, the reason I respond that way is because I'm not evolved enough. But I think that's incorrect. The reason I respond that way is because that's the habitual way I've always responded. So the, the call here is not to tap into something, some new workings of the universe, but to watch my response to watch what I want, am trying to get right now. I want the answer right now, and it's not here. So I'm going to worry about it. Just to watch ourselves, how we respond, because that is the key to losing quality of life. That response will take you down to a place you don't want to go. And the question we have to ask ourselves, am I obligated to go there? And obviously, I'm not obligated to go there. I'm choosing to go there. And I'm choosing to go there because I've always chosen to go there. That's always been my response. So that's the challenge of this whole spiritual thinking. Nothing in this universe has to change except how we perceive ourselves, how we perceive things, how we, uh, how we behave when we're confronted with a challenge. And it doesn't always take a big challenge to ruin our peace of mind, to rob us of our peace of mind. It can be very small things, and certainly small when we look back on them. So we go into a process of release and affirm, which is prayer. The releasing is denial, uh, denial of the negative energy. This is our first step in prayer as we clear out the unwanted negativity. We affirm the truth of what we desire, peace of mind and freedom from fear. We speak words something like this. The peace of God fills my mind. I am free of all fear. So I've talked about this quite a bit. Uh, prayer is to make an adjustment. It's adjusting our thought. We first release. You know, that thing pops up. We react. 
And that reaction, that's the energy I talked about last week or the week before. Treat that as energy, not as a condition, not as a thing. That's what we're denying. And by denying, we're not saying, let's stick our heads in the sand. We're saying to deny it the power I've been giving it, to release it. So my reaction is what I observe. And prayer is choosing not a reaction, but an action. And the action is affirming. The peace of God fills my mind. I am free of all fear. It's a, a statement affirming a certain state of mind that we want. So prayer is a twofold process. It's a releasing whatever the thing is in your life pops up or you can be holding on to it. it may have popped up yesterday or two weeks ago and you're still holding on to it and we all do it but is that what we want is the quality of life that we're experiencing as the result of that is that what we want sometimes that's a hard question to answer we say well i don't want that but here's this problem so i don't have any choice so we have to keep going back to this. Do we have a choice? Is this thing in control of my thought and emotion? Right now it is. But is that an absolute? Is that what I'm locked into? And the answer is no. But I have to think differently. I have to take a different approach to this whole thing. And that is not easy. You know, Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I'm not sure which yoke and which burden he was talking about because changing your mind when you are emotionally out of control is one of the most difficult things that you can do. And sometimes we just have to sit down and take a number of deep breaths, take about 10 real deep breaths and squeeze your chest and <laughs> you'll pass out. And so you might be able to get away from it for a time. But um, that is a very difficult thing to do. Nobody said any of this was easy. Well, Jesus did. He said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And again, I'd like to have an explanation on that one. What he's saying is the way we normally react is what is difficult. That's the hard thing. We say it is difficult to get control of our emotions and our thoughts but it's much more difficult when we don't do it when we don't try because what I have found that I am capable of doing first of all I will have a negative reaction and then catch myself sit down and begin to release that energy and I find that's the easier way maybe I still don't know what to do but I have peace of mind. I'm beginning to experience peace of mind. So it's a decision and a choice, and it's a, a choice to treat the whole process as energy rather than as a condition, as a reality. Very challenging thing to do, but it's not near as challenging as believing there's nothing we can do about it but react in fear. Because that fearful reaction takes the whole quality of our life right down the tube and that's what we are working on getting a handle on so the peace of god fills my mind i am free of all fear that's the affirmative side we confront our goliath when david came up against goliath his companions loaded him down with armor he felt so awkward that he had to throw it off as a shepherd, he was most comfortable using his sling and stones. He accomplished the desired end, but with a method most comfortable to him. That's where we want to get. We want to get to the point where we understand what we're doing with our mental and emotional energy. And it needs to be reasonable to us. We're not calling upon an old man in the sky. We're not calling upon something that's out of our reach. We are all very familiar with our thoughts and emotions. We're familiar with the quality of life we're experiencing right now. It's ours. 
And I think that's the one of the keys is to make this spiritual journey yours. Don't try to do what somebody has told you you need to do in this situation. Get to the point where it's yours. You're most comfortable with the sling and the stone. When we fear we're responding to a challenge, feeling we do not have the proper armor to succeed. But the simple sling and stone of the spoken word of truth should more than suffice. First thing we do is remind ourselves what is true. We are eternal beings. I've got this problem. It's a temporal thing. It's here today, will be gone tomorrow, be gone next day, whatever. But I've seen a thousand of these. But I'm here to stay. Is this thing bigger than me or am I bigger than it? And that's what we really come down to. Every problem I've ever, I've ever had has been resolved. And I'm sure you can say the same thing. It's like you may have problems right now. But if we would put on a scale all the problems, all the challenges we've had compared to what we have, it would far outweigh. And we've come through them all. And so we're here dealing with this again. How are we going to handle it? How are we going to apply what we know from the spiritual basis to this situation? And how can it be different from the last one that knocked me off my feet? Is it possible for me to, to stay standing, to not be emotionally taken over by this, but to be able to see this for what it is? It's not resolved today, but it will be resolved. What is resolved today is I have my peace of mind and I'm free of fear. That's what we want to achieve. Because by trying to solve that problem, that's what we want. Peace of mind and freedom from fear. So the idea that those states are already here is the important thing, the important shift that we make. So the ball is in our court, as we discussed last week, if we think less in terms of conditions and more in terms of spiritual energy, the ball is always in our court. Mm -hmm. uh, when Jesus said there will be, or uh, Revelation, I guess it said, uh, there will always be wars and rumors of wars. If we accept that that is true on a personal level, there's always going to be a challenge, always going to be something uh, that looks like it's standing in the way of our highest good. Then we can accept that. That's the nature of life in a body. And it's going to happen. So when it happens, let's not be too shocked. Let's not be too surprised. But also, let's remember that we will move past this. And maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but we will. In that sense, the ball is always in our court because we are dealing with energy. Thank you for watching this week's program. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with others. We want to reach as many people as we can, and we appreciate your help. If you'd like to help support this ministry, just click the donate card at the top right hand corner of your screen. Your financial support means a lot to us. We have many subjects in our video lineup, so feel free to take a look. If there's a topic you don't see and would like me to address, just put it in the comment section. I'd love to know what's on your mind. To subscribe to this channel, simply click our logo. Thanks again for your interest in Independent Unity, and have a wonderful week.